Hi, welcome to Checking In with Amy. My name is Amy Goldberg. I'm a registered nurse with the Elder Service Plan of the East Boston Neighborhood Health Center. We service people who live in the communities of East Boston, Chelsea, Revere, Winthrop, and Everett, and now we've expanded to Malden, Medford, Melrose, Stoneham, and Boston's North End. The goal of the Elder Service Plan is to keep someone living in their home safely, independently, and in a healthy manner. I've done about 13 shows, and so I hope that you do get to see some of the shows that we've done in the past. I am thrilled today to have as my guest Mary Lamara, who is a registered nurse and has her master's in education and is the clinical project manager for nursing for the Elder Service Plan. So welcome. Thank you. I'm so glad you're here. And just as an aside, Mary worked for the emergency department at the East Boston Neighborhood Health Center for about 30 years. I've been an emergency room nurse. I was an emergency room nurse for 32 years. 32 years. Um, but with East Boston Neighborhood Health Center for 23. So that's a long time. It's a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> so Mary's going to talk to us today about our heart and what it is and how exactly it functions. So. Sure. So um, this is a model of a healthy heart. Um, the heart has four chambers. Um, the, the blood from the body goes into the right side of the heart and it's poorly oxygenated blood. And then when it goes into the right side of the heart, it goes into the lungs, becomes oxygenated, and then it goes into the left side of the heart and that's how we get oxygen through our body. So it's an important to have a healthy heart. It's very important to have a healthy heart because your organs need oxygen. That's right. So let's just get talking right to the heart of the matter. Mm -hmm. And so tell us um, about heart failure. Tell me about heart failure facts. Okay, sure. So if you take a look at the slide, 6.6 .6 million people in the United States have been diagnosed with heart failure. And each year, 550,000 people are newly diagnosed. And the reason for that is that we are treating some of the causes so much better than we had in the past that people are now living longer. Right. And so we're getting more people diagnosed with heart failure. It's actually the fastest growing condition out of all the conditions. And tell me, um, heart failure doesn't really mean that your heart's going to stop, does it? No, it certainly... Because that's scary, heart it failure. It is. No, it certainly doesn't mean that it's going to stop. What it means is that the pumping action of the heart is not effective, meaning it's, it's ineffective. It's not pumping enough oxygen-rich blood to the rest of the body. So tell me again a little bit more. So your heart is a muscle. Yes, your heart is a muscle and it's about the size of a fist. So when you make a fist, that's pretty much about the size of your heart. Um, when your heart is broken up into right and left side, the, the left side of the heart if the blood is moving slowly through the left side of the heart, the blood starts to back up into mm. the lung. And so that's when we get the diagnosis of congestive heart failure. If it's a right-sided heart failure, the blood backs up into the rest of your body. Mm. And that's where you'll get your swelling in your hands and your feet feet and in your abdomen. Some people actually are diagnosed with both right and left-sided heart failure. Mm. And you had mentioned to me that simply taking a short walk or climbing stairs might make someone a little bit short of breath. 
Yes, so when you have a little extra circulating volume of fluid just lying flat in bed, you can be short of breath. Walking up a few stairs, short of breath. Um, or just taking a little walk down the street, you can become short of breath and you actually have to stop. Right. So tell me what causes all of this. So there are numerous causes of congestive heart failure, um, hypertension. The number one cause is called coronary artery disease. And I actually have a heart failure heart here. And it shows um, the plaque inside of the blood vessels, these important blood vessels that feed your heart and the rest of the body. The blood moves through them slowly because because the plaque is taking up room right. inside the vessel. So when it moves through slowly, it's going to back up. Mm, not um, good. <laughs> yeah, and some other causes, um, diabetes. Um, if someone has a myocardial infarction, which is a heart attack, if you damage a section of your heart, that can cause heart failure. Um, let me see. Heart muscle disease, you mentioned? Yep, heart muscle disease. Some people that are um, taking cancer treatments can mm. cause heart failure as well as... Congenital? Yes, congenital. And then one thing that I have actually is thyroid disorder, so... Yes, either slow or fast, um, whichever hypo or hyperthyroidism right. can also cause heart failure. See, I always have some diagnosis <laughs> that I wish I didn't. Um, what I want to talk about now is risk factors. So these are some things that possibly we can control. So let's talk about risk factors. Sure. So some of the risk factors associated with heart failure um, is high cholesterol, um, a heart attack that someone's had in the past, obesity, alcohol abuse, drug abuse, and smoking. So clearly some of those you can control. Absolutely. And people probably don't even realize that, you know. Right. Um, so let's talk now as we worked in the emergency department for so long, some of the signs and symptoms that you saw with patients who came in about a heart attack, this would be good to know? Yeah, so it is very scary. When somebody um, is in congestive heart failure, we call it in medical terms, acute exacerbation. So heart failure is a chronic condition, but you can have flare-ups. And it's actually the number one cause of hospital admissions, number one more than any other condition. It's because it happens so quickly. And you think you're at home and you think you're gonna be okay, and it doesn't get better. So you do end up in the hospital. So some of the symptoms that um, someone may experience are shortness of breath, fatigue, just clearly getting so exhausted. They may have chest pain. Um, they may um, see some swelling in their hands and in their feet. They may get confused. It also causes depression. Mm. Yep. Um, you could have trouble thinking or sleeping. And also, you may feel dizzy. So people need to listen to their bodies. Listen to your body. Um, so that's my next thing, is a lot of people ignore signs and symptoms because they might say, you know what, I'm not feeling well, I'll go to bed, and then if I don't feel well in the morning, I'll call my doctor. Yes. Not good. That isn't good. If you, um, let's say, you notice some swelling in your feet, it is really important to call your doctor or your nurse right away. Um, and 
So the way we monitor that is by weighing, the person would weigh themselves every day at the same time of day, wearing the same clothing. And if you notice a weight gain of three pounds within 24 hours or five pounds, like say over a week, then you need to call your doctor immediately. So um, let's talk about some self-care. People can do things and what would they do? Why would they do it? How would they do it to take better care of themselves? So the first thing you need to do is if there are any symptoms, call your provider, call your nurse. Um, and again, the provider or nurse will, um, they can, they'll collaborate in a decision on whether you can be treated at home, maybe a little bit more of your fluid pill, or they'll have you come in. Um, and the important thing is don't wait. Right. That's your mo that is the most important thing somebody could do for um, self-care management, is don't wait, don't think it's going to get better. Right. Um, go in right away. The next question would be, what is the viewer's role in self-care? So one thing that we talked about, you and I, is fluid. Yes. So if I'm on a two gram, a lot of people don't even know what that is, a two gram sodium diet. Yes. Um, what does that all mean? Okay, so one important aspect of heart failure is watching your sodium, which sodium is salt. There's always a little misconception. Well, I didn't have any sodium. <laughs> I just had a little salt. Right. So they are the same. That's first off. Second, a two gram sodium diet means you can only have a half a teaspoon, which we have here, a half a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of salt, which, yep, right here, and this is within a 24-hour period. Right. So that doesn't mean added salt, that means total salt. So if there are salt in your food or if you are having canned food, like soup, that's, that all has sodium. And it's described as milligrams in, your, um, in the can. So it may say 500 milligrams per serving. That's a half a gram. So you, you know that you'll only have 1,500 milligrams left, which is only about <laughs> a quarter of a teaspoon. Right. And then how much fluid to take? Sometimes people are restricted in their fluid. Yes, they are. So um, when there is a fluid restriction in heart failure, that's typically one to two liters, which is equivalent to four to eight cups of liquid. So one thing that I do when I teach um, heart failure to our participants, I, have, I get them all a one liter bottle. This is actually a two liter bottle here. And I filled it with four cups of a liquid. And the four cups of liquid equals one liter. So what I have them do is right when they get up in the morning, if they have their cup of coffee, they are to put the exact amount in a little cup like this and pour it in. If they have a little juice with their mm. pills, the exact same thing. And it actually gives our participants a visual of how much fluid they're actually taking in. And I actually had one participant tell me at 12 noon they were done with their leader. <laughs> Oh gosh. So they'll have a better, a clearer understanding right. of what one liter is. Right. Mm. But I, I think this is fabulous visual. Yes. And then this was some salt that I know you brought along. Talk a little bit about that. Right. So I actually teach an entire class on sodium salt. salt. So this is um, 
Himalayan pink salt, and um, participants and everyone needs to know that this beautiful pink salt, Himalayan salt, is um, salt. It is, it's just salt. So we have kosher salt and sea salt, and then different color salts, and the color actually coincides with the area where they're from. So you'll have a darker color from some other area. Um, and this is a pretty pink from Himalaya. Okay, so all of it isn't good. All of it is not good. <laughs> it looks good, but it's not. Right. So um, let's talk a little bit about exercise. And I know that's part of self-care management. It is, it's a crucial part of health um, healthcare management, self-care management, um, because your heart is a muscle. And like any other muscle in our body, we really need to, to keep it active and keep it strong, as strong as possible. So we'd love to see uh, 15, 20 minutes, three to four times a week. Um, aerobic exercise is recommended. However, taking a stroll also is very effective. Um, I also teach to um, just working in the garden is actually helping you and keeping your heart pumping. And you're, you're getting that muscle, giving the muscle a little bit of a workout. And I think another thing that we have, we're so blessed about having, is our wellness center. So you teach there classes about a healthy heart, congestive heart failure, about salt, and we also have all kinds of activities um, that's based around aerobic activity so that they're getting their heart muscle active. It is. So it, um, the class is eight weeks. And from day one, we start them off really slow. Yep. And by the time of the eight weeks is over, they are, they are typically, if they're able, work on the treadmill, wow. um, right? Um, they're doing uh, 25 to 30 minutes. That's great. It's wonderful. So I think people really have a great idea of what to look for. I know we have one more slide that has some visuals about parts of your body that could get full with fluid. So let's just go over those briefly. Sure. So again, when the right side of your heart is affected, that goes, that extra fluid that gets congested goes to the rest of your body. And when that occurs, you will get some swelling um, in your abdomen, you may, uh, which is called ascites. Um, you can also get um, some swelling in your ankles, your lower legs, your ankles and your feet, and also your hands. Right. And it's really important to monitor that because it's telling us that you potentially have a little too much fluid on board right. and we may have to adjust your fluid pill. Right. So all of this, the visuals, the heart, the amount of salt, which is negligible, um, is an important thing for people to remember going forward. So thank you very much, Oh, Mary. my pleasure. Um, and if you um, or anyone you know would like more information about the Elder Service Plan or anything that you learned in today's um, segment, please feel free to give us a call at 617-568-6377. And we'll be glad to send you out information in one of our Checking In With Amy bags. And until we meet the next time, thank you for allowing us into your home. And please stay well. Bye now.
My parents were always very independent. They always seemed to take care of each other. My dad met my mom when she was 13 and he was 15, so they got a lot of practice. It was really difficult when they were faced with health challenges and started to need some help. It, it was also really hard on me and my brothers. It seemed like uh, every day we were getting calls. They needed to go to this appointment or that appointment. And it became pretty apparent that they you know, really couldn't live on their own without some help, and more importantly, stay healthy. We're lucky to find the Elder Service Plan. Uh, almost immediately after enrolling, uh, we saw some real change for the positive. Uh, all their medical appointments were in the same location, including the prescriptions. Uh, if they did need to go to a, see a specialist, then transportation would take them, and that was a big relief for us. Uh, my mom attended the Pace Day Center each day where she could really socialize, and she loved that. Uh, when they needed services in the home, that was a big help too. Uh, and my dad, you know, he'd still call me every day, but uh, not because he had to, because he wanted to. He'd say, Stevie, you know, you won't believe it, they fixed my teeth, uh, they got me some new shoes today. Uh, it just brought some amazing stability to the family. I'll see you a little later today, okay? Okay. My name's Lucas Akerley. I'm the activities coordinator for the Elder Service Plan in Winthrop. Today we're doing active parachute games. We uh, have a ball toss with some music. It's fun. Keeping active at ESP is part of our plan to keep you happy, healthy, and independent. Our mission at the Elder Service Plan is to keep our participants living safely in the community. And we do that in a number of ways. The first being with the physician and the entire team to take care of the person medically. We also try to think creatively and provide other things that they may need, be it shopping service, laundry service, we may provide respite for um, the caregiver, or even aid visits in our supported housing. We try to be as flexible as possible here in the Elder Service Plan to reach the goal of keeping our participants living safely in the community. My name is um, Patty Ferranti and um, I'm with the Elder Service Care Program and I absolutely love it. Just talking about it right now makes me want to cry. Before I was in the ESP, I was always calling my family and having them, you know, pick me up to take me to doctor's appointments and stuff like that. And now I, you know, now that I'm in ESP, I have the door-to-door um, -door service, coordinated care. My doctor always knows I'm coming. They always arrange my appointments. Everything is just so perfect. The program is fantastic, it really is. As a physical therapist in the Elder Service Plan, a big part of my job is to help people keep up with their strength and balance. Um, a lot of times I see people after they get injured or some type of surgery, but a, another part of my job is to make sure people stay active with the regular exercise program so they don't lose the strength and balance they gain back. What we do is we talk to the person to find out what they want. Do they want to increase their endurance, their strength? Do they want to be able to do things easier throughout the course of their day? We will work with them and develop a plan and we move forward with it. We try really hard to keep up with the mission of the program, which is to keep people in the community of their choosing for as long as possible and as safe as possible. Even sometimes just a cane or a walker can make all the difference in making sure people stay safe. Very center to our plan and what we do here is the patient, the person. And uh, the way we deliver that care is by having a care plan which centers around the person's goals, their choices. As a medical director for the Yellow Service Plan for the last 25 years, uh, I've had the pleasure of watching our program grow enormously. While we started out largely in East Boston, we now serve participants in Chelsea, Revere, Everett, East Boston, and Winthrop. I think one of the real great reasons for our success is our ability to uh, comprehensively coordinate our participants' needs. It's not just seeing the doctor or the nurse. Pharmacists, activities directors, nurses, nurse practitioners, van drivers, dietitians, all of us work together under one roof to keep our members healthy, active, and independent.